Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to plot a custom Excel graph. Um, so generally, uh, when we first start using Excel and I ask uh, students to plot a graph, what they'll do is go to your table, highlight the data, get insert, get it, whack scatter graph, and you get something that looks like this. Um, and that's fine, but this is basically Excel guessing what you want. And so what I'm going to show you in this video is actually how do we tell Excel specifically what we want in a graph? So let's get rid of that. So the things that we want to be able to do with them. So we want to specify which variable to plot on which axis. So tell Excel, I want these numbers on the Y axis, these numbers on the X axis. So it, it's not guessing, it knows specifically what you want. We'll look at adding axis labels, units, uh, grid lines and also um, changing the plot, plotting points. I'll show you how to change them to an X like we do with graphs all the time in physics. I'll show you how to add a suitable, and I'll underline the word suitable, line of best fit and display its equation. So we'll look at how to do straight lines and also um, curved lines for nonlinear relationships. And then we'll look at how to add a second set of data to that same graph because it will then allow us to directly compare them. So let's jump back into Excel. So in order to plot our custom graph, we don't actually highlight any data whatsoever. We just click a random cell over here on the right hand side. It doesn't matter which I could have clicked here, here it makes a difference. So we go to insert and we go to this one where you can see insert scatter or bubble chart. Click on the drop down arrow and we want the one that doesn't have any lines on it. So we just want it to plot points. We don't want it to join the dots like you might do in biology, for example. Now what you do is right click on the area of your graph and go to select data. So this is how we're going to be able to customize what we want on each axis. So we're going to go to add a new set of data. So we left click on that. Uh, so let's call it, give it a name. So this is scenario one. So on the X axis, we plot our independent variable. So let's highlight all of those. And it's important that you don't highlight the text here. Excel won't understand that if you do that. And then on the Y axis, you have to delete this thing it puts in here by default because it won't allow you to have a blank in the Y values. And then we highlight our dependent variable there. OK, so once we've done that, we can just click OK and OK again. And we've plotted a graph here, which um, looks fairly similar to what we did already. So now we'll look at modifying it. So if you click on it, you'll get these two toolbars pop up. So if you go to design, quick layout, and then go on to layout three is the one I typically use. The reason I use this is this gives you a nice set of grid lines to make it easier to read things. It also gives you a legend over here, because if we're going to have two sets of data, we're going to want to be able to indicate which is which, and it will give you axis labels. So, uh, in here, we can put our independent variable. Um, I'm just going to pick some arbitrary units. So let's say we want to do meter squared. We can use a superscript. So I'm going to press Control Shift Plus, and then that does a superscript. Control Shift Plus again disables the superscript like that. So I'm going to get rid of that. I just wanted to show you how we could do it. Uh, if you want to do a subscript, that's just Control Plus, and then that will do. Um, oh, um, like your subscript below the line. Uh, but let's not worry about that too much now. Uh, let's label our other axis. Helps if I can spell. There we go, dependent variable. And let's put them in bold, why not? So uh, we've got our axis labeled. We've managed to add grid lines into it. So if you say want more grid lines in here, you, what you can do is go to add chart element Grid lines, we've currently got every grid line in here. Uh, we can deactivate some of those if we want. You can also right click on them and format them. So you can change uh, how frequently you get them. You can change their appearance, all those kind of things. So we've got our labels and grid lines. I'll show you now how to change the points into an X because we don't plot with blobs. This blob covers a massive area of our graph. It's not precise. So you right click on a data point um, oh, it's not going to let me do it with that one. So, because I've got the best, best, best fit line selected. So, right click on the point. There we go. And we go format data series. Now, 
if you're not able to get that and you just keep getting your trend line, what you can do is go into this drop down menu and actually find the thing that we want to edit. So we want to edit the series scenario one. We go to fill and line, go to marker, marker options, built in, and we want X's. We don't want blobs. And we can get rid of that. We can change into black. We don't usually use blue. And you can see we've now got them plotted with an X. So now what we'll do is look at formatting our trend line. So you again, you right click on your trend line, format trend line. So you can see by default, Excel guesses you want a straight line of best fit, which we can see here is totally appropriate. I'll, sh I'll deal with nonlinear ones when we put the second set of data in. Um, but we don't usually use dashes, so let's have it black. Let's change how thick it is, and we need to change it so it's now a straight line of best fit. If you actually want to change things about the line other than its appearance, we go to this bars one. So you can see we can change it to different shapes. We can also say we want to get it to uh, go all the way up to plus six. We could forecast it forward a period. And we could also like forecast it like back a period. And we can also display its equation on the chart. So we can get it to say, actually, this line has this equation, which is a nice feature. So let's close that menu. Now we'll see our, when I started forecasting, it changed the scale here, but actually we've got lots of wasted space. So let's format that, format axis. Let's set the maximum to six and this one to minus six. Then we're using up all our graph space. Again, if we do the same thing on our Y axis and go to format axis, we don't need the minimum to say 1.5. So let's do that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we might need to change those once we add our second set of data, but that looks pretty good for now. Um, so if we go back to what we said we we're going to do, we've looked at how we customize which variable to plot on which axis. Let's say we are now not happy with that and we want to change that. So if you right click on your graph and go to select data, if we go to edit here, we could now say, actually, we want the dependent variable on our X axis. So we delete what's in here and then highlight that. So we can easily change that if we want to. Um, we've added our axis labels, units, grid lines, and changed the plotting points. We've added a suitable line of best fit and displays equation. So what I'm going to do is add a second set of data to our graph and show you how we change lines of best fit for nonlinear graphs. So let's do that. So uh, to add a second set of data, you right click on your graph, go back to the select data menu, and we're going to add another one. So this one is scenario two. So we're just going to show what it will. So you see over here, it says scenario one. If we write scenario two, then this will change that. So on our X axis, again, we want our independent variable and we'll notice the values are the same for both. That's what's going to allow us to directly compare them. And this time we'll chuck this one in as our dependent variable. Now we can click OK. And we can see we've got this graph, which is clearly a nonlinear graph. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly change the points to X's as usual. So let's do that. I'll keep them a different color so we can distinguish them. That's fine. OK, so what we want to do now is add a line of best fit for this. And you can see our axis now doesn't go low enough because we can see we need it to go down to minus one in here. So let's let's fix that straight away. I'm going to format the axis. We need it to go down down to minus one. Actually, let's go down to minus 1.5. So we've got all our, because at the moment our axis is hovering over there. Let's go to minus two. There we go. Uh, and we can, oh, still in the way, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure we can fix that because, well, 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 we won't worry about that. Uh, let's add a line of S fit. So you right click on this, add trend line. So now you can see it starts by default as guessing you want a straight line of S fit. Uh, so again, let's get rid of the dashes, make it a solid line. I'll keep it a different color so we can identify it. So if we go back to trend line options, uh, we've got a few different options. So this looks like kind of a y equals x squared graph. So that would be describing a polynomial order two. So the two is, is x squared. If we change it to order three, it will guess it's like an x cubed, x to the four. But x squared fit very nicely in there. Okay, so we've got our line of best fit. And again, we can get it to tell us what our equation is. 
Okay, so looking at this equation, we can see there is indeed an x squared term. You can see the x term is basically nothing, because you see that's times 10 to the minus 15. So I'm going to actually delete that, uh, but you'll have to do that for yourself. So this looks like what our equation of this second line is. So what we've done is we've added a second set of data and looked at how we have non-linear line of best fits. And then we've got it to display our equation there. And then this, this axis is really annoying me. Let's, let's uh, check, chuck that in as minus four, see if that's any better. No, it, it's not. That's not helping in the slightest. So let's go back to what it was originally. Have a nice scale. OK, so there we go. Uh, we've got our graph that we're looking for and we've essentially gone through how to do each of these things and these are just basic skills we're going to be needing um, throughout the physics course we'll regularly be plotting graphs in excel so you need to become very familiar with doing this